Hey yo, Planet Sewers. Welcome back to the Houston Zoo. Today we're going to build a lemur habitat, another one. This one's the ring-tailed lemurs. Since we're going through the primate walk, um, I'm just putting in as many primates as I can. So we're going to be doing that habitat today as well as finishing off the uh, mesh top to these guys over here because I forgot that. Um, so while I start that, um, I do want to apologize for not putting a video out well, last week. I went and helped a friend of ours with the Dickens on the Strand in Galveston. It was a lot of fun. I thought I was going to have a little bit more free time to get the video out and it just didn't happen. I tried to do it Monday and Tuesday and same thing. I also was running into some issues with my screen recorder, but I think I finally got that figured out too. So back to video making and habitat making. Um, so here we are. I'm setting the stage for their little area that they have right here. Um, I'm not really sure, you know, how some of this really goes together in the back as far as, you know, the animal's private space, the zookeeper space. So I just kind of will go with my own thing back there. Um, but there is another viewpoint for, um, I'm not sure if it's, I think it's the same animal. They have a couple of different animals in this habitat, um, of different types of monkeys that get along or primates. Um, but I think I'm going to separate them. Um, I'm going to pick out different ones to go on that other viewing platform that you see kind of off to the side there. And right here, I just had, you know, the snap on for this and um, I did redo it a couple of times trying to get it to meet up a certain way and then right here I decided I will add one more of these little guys and then I move some of these it kind of loses it straight down um, you know motion that it had direction um, that's okay so I ended up having to kind of move that back gate that I'd already built and get it built excuse me, and get it to fit after I figure out how to get them to kind of meet because when I moved this over, obviously as you can see, they don't meet perfectly, so I have to get in there and kind of line it up. Um, I was really happy with how this habitat came out, with how the habitat actually looks in Google Earth. Um, I think it came out pretty good as far as what it looks like when you walk up onto it. They do have a building back there, a little support building I'm gonna build in a minute. Um, and then when you kind of walk around, you can see, you know, this is really just all one big area for all the little primates that live in here. Um, and so right here I was kind of doing that terrain raise and also trying to make sure they can still get in and out of here. Also, I wanted to make sure that the staff could get in and out of here. A lot of this build is uh, about the mesh. So when you're duplicating that, finding the pieces to fit into these curves um so my method really was you know how far can i scoot over with the larger pieces before they start to uh, show on the outside and you know filling it in um kind of like tetris style i guess a little bit um and then coming back in with the smaller pieces and trying to overlap um to kind of get the squares not to be too visible that it's overlapping when you get in close um, I know that doesn't really matter probably because once you get further out, you're not going to see that. But that was my approach. So we're going to go around and do this whole side here. And then since this is pretty much symmetrical on both sides, we'll highlight all of these guys. And when I get it done, we're going to copy it over. So as you can see, I was kind of trying to figure out uh, how to fit this in here to fill in the space. Um, you know, I guess I could have, you know, lined it up to the curve, um, but I really wanted those squares to overlap uh, more so than, you know, have the different angles, kind of like I did on the top part uh, in the other areas. I really didn't want the different directions of all the, um, all the mesh. So I've got that one in, so we're gonna just get the mesh part and scoot that over here. And we've got that. And then we're going to go in and do the top side. I had first grabbed one of these and I didn't realize that it had kind of a bad curve to it. It wasn't exactly flat. So I ended up having to take 
that one out um, once I make it all the way up here. So I have to get that curve in and I pushed it a little bit with a bigger piece. I really uh, didn't want too many little pieces. So I figured, you know, there's nobody's gonna be really up here to see that it doesn't exactly, you know, touch in all the little spaces. Um, however, I, it looks great. You can't see those little small areas that don't quite, you know, make it over there. Anyway, so we're gonna finish off all this mesh. Um, a lot of these habitats will be like this throughout the little walk we have here. So in the future speed builds, I may not include all the mesh moving. It's very repetitive, um, but with this one, it had such interesting shape. I thought y'all might be, you know, interested to see how it came together. Um, I know when I first started playing Planet Zoo, I would, you know, scour for certain types of videos so I could figure out, you know, how people were managing the pieces and moving them and getting them to work. And it really helped me figure out, uh, you know, all the differences and, you know, how the arrows are and how to, you know, make things that aren't square, that are unique and different. Uh, over here, I'm gonna go ahead and start that staff support building. I just put a little keeper hut in it. Um, I know there's, you know, a little, I think a keeper hut in the staff room, like right behind it. Um, but this area does have a lot of animals. So I wanted to make sure that we're able to uh, support them all um, with the several habitats that are right here. Um, there's the Babarusa back there that I'm gonna need to work on soon. We have the orangutans behind there. And then we have three lemur habitats all right here. And so that is a lot of animals to support and we're not even quite done. I know I'm gonna add at least uh, three or four more habitats in this area. Uh, excuse the Cory Bark. He is in the other room, um, but our house has all tile. So sounds really travel. Ruby's out there too. Um, I've already cut her out a few times. I'm not sure if she's managed to stay in, but all the animals do wish you happy holidays. And let's see, where are we with this? I got distracted, but anyway. Um, so with this one, with the building, I decided to kind of use these wood pieces, one to kind of make a little foundation and then two to kind of just cover up where some of the building just doesn't meet very nicely. And so I just copied that around on all the corners so it would kind of have a uniform look. I didn't want this building really to be too fancy since it's hiding back here. I didn't imagine it would be an ornate building, but I did want to add a little wood touch to it um, since it's, you know, already kind of green to blend in with its surrounding. Um, and so that's where the ideas came from and why I put those on there. Originally when I built this, I had thought I copied some of those on the corners and really I just moved them. It was like three times. I just moved the same one. And so that's why I was going around the building. It's like, did I get them all? <laughs> did I actually copy this time? Uh, so here we're going to do the roof and on here, I just used a real low slope to kind of get right to this side. And I thought about using the corner piece and then ended up uh, grabbing the little gable piece and putting that here and adding in, you know, those two little spots to cover it up. And I was pretty happy with how that roof came out. Um, whenever you split the buildings, the roofs do get a little difficult sometimes to get them together. Originally I was going to bring this way out. Um, and then I kind of changed my mind a couple of times. So it may change its shape suddenly from the editing. And that would be why, um, I was trying to bring it kind of out to where that other, um, viewing area is going to be. But I think what I'm going to do is end up kind of moving these habitat gates and um, this building will probably change again, but I wanted to leave room for um, you know, whatever's gonna go on this other side. So we're gonna see how this actually turns out as I build around and make my way through this, um, this walk area with all the habitats I wanna put in. So I'm thinking for my next animals, I know we're gonna do a proboscis monkey, and then I know, I think I'm gonna put in um, the bonobo and 
I'm not sure what other primates I'm going to put in here, but definitely going to have a good array of primates. Um, no more lemurs. We've got them all. They're right in the beginning. Um, but that was kind of what they had was smaller monkeys in the first section. And then your bigger monkeys or, um, or your bigger primates were more towards the back of the walk once you got up on the kind of the deck area. So this build is about to get really interesting, I think. Uh, probably one more little boring habitat and then we'll get into one that has some water. So for this, I was just building a little platform and I wanted it to have a little support under there. And so I just kind of turned them to, you know, give that look that it's got some nice support under there and make it look a little realistic. And then I wanted to make sure since I put a food item up there that our staff members are able to get up there. So that's why it has the ramp. Um, not so much for the lemurs, but for our keepers. And in the back of this habitat, they did have, you know, just some poles that were super high um, with little platforms on top. And then they had ropes and vines. And I really wish uh, there was some better log options, like stick options, because they did have just some sticks, you know, through here. But uh, some of the plants that do have that, that, you know, the broken limbs or whatever, those are specific to certain regions and the animals don't like them per se. So I didn't put them into the build since it wasn't in the filter for these guys. I do need to uh, kind of fix a couple of things in the zoo. I do try to build these so that they work and put them on the workshop. Um, but there are some issues with a couple of habitats. I need to spend some time over there. Um, so that's the end of that speed build. Here we are at the beginning of the Houston Zoo. We're not gonna walk through it today. We're just gonna kinda look at certain little areas. Um, this is gonna change soon. I can't wait to put a food truck in here. Um, I don't look forward to tearing down the Macaw Cafe though. And then here we have our, um, I can't even remember, the Capuchin Monkey. There we go, at the Natural Encounter Building. And then over to the side is the Prairie Dogs. I changed that out and then we have the reptile house. Just thought I would share a couple of things you would see if you were walking in the zoo towards this area as you come up. Uh, so there's the reptile house and then you have uh, what I put was a Nile monitor, I think, but I think there's a different animal actually in there um, that's in the game. I think it's a Gila monster maybe. I'm not sure, I can't remember. And here we are at the Worthing World of Primates again. So we're gonna get to have this view a couple of times as we work through this. Um, but the zoo is starting to get a little too big to walk around in and do, you know, oh, I start here and this is what I built this time. Um, so here we are, now we're passing by the orangutans and there's a little bridge and the orangutans off to the right. And the very first one you come up to is the uh, red rough lemurs. They're in this habitat here. I could have combined them and let them mix, but I decided not to. I kept them as separate habitats. As we come through here, I'm looking forward to the new DLC having those monument things. Um, I'm gonna see how those look here instead of those big green signs. And some stuff I didn't put in the speed build, I added that rope off to the side and uh, all the scenery off to the right side. So there they are looking at the lemur habitat there. And as you walk through here, there's a lot of plants, bamboo, trees. And so as you can see, I added that little rope barrier there. And we're gonna come over here and we have the anniversary lemurs, the black and white ruffed lemur. And this is their habitat um, attached right next to the red ruffed lemur. And so they have a nice little space. And then as we come this way, I put in some scenery plants so that hopefully it's not too ugly over there because we haven't built all of those things yet. So some of that may change. And here we are at our ring-tailed lemur habitat. I do need to add in some education and there goes one We're running off and I see one way up at the top, up on the right there. And we'll do a little uh, cinematics of them inside of their habitat here. I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday and I hope you're enjoying your holiday season and I will catch you next time. Next week will be Franchise Zoo and then in two weeks we'll have the Houston Zoo again. May the RNG odds 
be ever in your favor.